If you're new to the Compensator series, the rules are simple. Number one, no exotic enterprise build to order hardware. And with rule number one in mind, you buy the most expensive possible thing in every category, which is how we ended up with, I kid you not, 11 eight terabyte SSDs. Believe it or not though, the storage is far from the most wild thing about this year's build. Nope, that award goes to this case from Regner. This is the Cooling System Pro. And as we already kind of teased here, it has not one, but two full side panel radiators built into the case. Look how thick it is. This is a Linus for scale. It's thicker than me. And that thick computer needs a thick budget from today's sponsor, Ugreen. Click the link in the video description to find solutions for all of your charging needs. Let's start with the CPU, where we've gone with the Core i9-13900KS from Intel, which is kind of weak, right? Where's my Threadripper at, right? No, really, neither AMD nor Intel has a consumer high-end desktop platform anymore, meaning that if we're gonna buy the highest priced consumer product, this is it. Between the filming of this video and its release, AMD announced the return of the Threadripper platform. HEDT lives on. It's not out yet though, so our choice is still valid. I mean, it's not so bad. Eight performance cores, 16 efficiency cores, and it clocks over five gigahertz when it's at full boost. But the bad news is that it is neither the fastest CPU on the market for gaming, nor is it the fastest for productivity. And by the time this video comes out, it won't even be the newest from Intel, though at the time of filming, it is the most expensive. The good news is everything we lacked in excessive overkill on our CPU, we more than make up for with the MSI Z790 Godlike. It has everything, DDR5 7600, 7M.2 slots, two and a half gig and 10 gig ethernet, 60 watt power delivery, dual Thunderbolt, and it comes with a touch screen. I know, right? <laughs> what? This is the definition of excess, both in terms of included accessories and in terms of price. It cost a whopping 1200 US dollars. I could build a pretty good LAN center for $1,200. Like if all I wanted to play was older games, man. Moving on to system memory, I think this is a compensator record for how quickly our excessive budget is actually going to cost us performance. Because instead of equipping our system with the fastest DDR5 7600 memory, we've actually gone with DDR5 6800. Why? So we can have two kits and a grand total of 192 gigabytes of system RAM. I don't know what's more impressive about these, how tight the latencies are considering the speed and the capacity, or the fact that each of them was only 500 bucks when we got them and has already fallen under 400 since then. RAM went from being the thing keeping gaming out of reach for people to being one of the cheapest things in this build. Now's the part where things get really interesting. Remember how I said it supports seven M.2 storage drives, but in the intro, you might've noticed we only have five? That's because if you wanna connect more drives to the SATA ports, you have to disable two of your M.2 slots, which we felt was an okay trade-off to more than double our total storage capacity. It just means we need to make sure that we put all of our drives in the active slots. Uh, where are all the slots? I found four so far. This took me longer than I'd like to admit, but boop. So cool. Oh, these aren't cheap, but boy, are they cool. Eight terabytes at PCIe Gen 4 speeds in the form factor of a gum stick. After consulting the manual, these two are going to be disabled in our config, while the rest of them will run either off of the PCIe lanes coming from the CPU or the ones coming from the motherboard chipset. And normally I would care which one of these has my OS on it, and I'd want to put it in this primary slot. But because we traded PCIe Gen 5 speeds, for more capacity, it doesn't really matter. We're just gonna go ahead and throw these in. Every time we build one of these, I just can't stop myself from thinking, wow, this is just so stupid. The whole time, really? I know I've already said this, this is the point where this build goes completely off the rails, but that was all a big lie because it's actually happening now. This cooling system, the wildest thing about it is it's not to cool the CPU, it's to cool the cooler of the CPU. This is the EK Quantum Delta Squared Tech, a 
five hundred plus dollar water block. Nay, water block system. This is the water block, and this sandwiched in between is a two hundred and ten watt thermoelectric cooling module. That's right. This block is capable of sucking up power, then using the Pelche effect, cooling the CPU side to below ambient temperatures. Here's the thing about that: while your CPU can get so cold with this block that condensation will start to form on your motherboard, that's why we've got foam on the back and this cool rubber booty that goes around the socket. That is only the case when you're sitting at idle. Unfortunately, managing idle temperatures is not the main concern of most gamers. It's load temperatures we care about, and under an intense load, a modern processor like the 13900KS can draw upwards of 300 watts, which introduces two problems. Number one, we now have to cumulatively remove the 210 watts plus the 300 plus watts and dissipate that. Thankfully, we've got that covered. But problem number two is that this Peltier module can only move 210 watts away from the CPU, meaning that at a certain point it becomes overwhelmed and can actually start acting as an insulator. I'm not going to say this thing is completely pointless, because that would be rude. I'm just going to say that from EK you could get a block that would perform better under an all-core load for half the price, and that half-price block would be gold-plated. I'm getting ahead of myself a little bit, though. I haven't even put on thermal compound, and the reason is that I'm not just going to goop this stuff on here. If I'm going to pay for the most expensive tube of thermal paste we could find, I'm going to use the included applicator kit. Look at this. What am I even looking at here? It comes with a card. I'm a card-carrying nerd now. I mean, I guess and it has peels. It has peels, so it can be beautiful and pristine for. Two seconds before you put thermal goop all over it. Holy shnikes! This is actually a thing that you actually stick to your CPU. Okay. So pretty. I know, right? It's gonna look professionally applied. Okay. This block is the gift that keeps giving. Did I mention that the installation is way more complex? First, you have to run. Well, your power connector for that 210 watt tech, the leads for your thermal sensors,、um, your RGB. <laughs> Let's run all that through the boot. In fairness to EK, and I believe Intel might have helped co-develop this,、yes. it does have a purpose. If all you want is one, maybe two cores to boost as high as possible, this may help get you 100, 200 megahertz higher, which could improve game performance a little bit. It's just the second you hit it with an all-core load, things fall apart. Now, with the backplate, the mounting posts, and the boot installed, we can just put on these little spring-loaded screws, and we are almost halfway done. Is that our most expensive ha, screwdriver? Ha! Nice. This one?、Yeah. No, this one's the same price as the standard color. I should go get it. What, you have it? I'll be right back. I'm gonna keep working on this. There are some technical challenges. Oh, oh my god! But if this sees the light of day. It will be substantially more expensive than the screwdriver you're holding. Holy crap! Machined from a solid piece of aluminum with brass end cap and accent ring. Yeah, I'm building the rest of the system with this. Okay, get out of here, retro driver, that you can sign up for a notification when it comes in stock. LTTstore.com. What about second annoying thing to mount? What the heck is that? This is the controller module that handles tech power. See, the thing is, you don't want it running full bore all the time because even with your insulation, you could still get condensation. So this makes sure that it is only kicking in at full strength when it's needed and allows you to set a target temperature. Of course, we can't mount this until we're installing things in the case, which I think it's actually time to start. Wow, this is heavy.、Mm. I have a scale. There was a scale here. Okay, here we go. Here we go.、Uh, I think it's about ten pounds, though. Ten point four pounds. So that's like four kilos, four and a half kilos. Do you want to weigh the empty case? <laughs> okay. All right, fine.、Uh, wow, immediately blocks the. Sorry, I can't see what I'm doing. Okay, stop wiggling. Two twenty-four. How about now? One sixty-four. It weighs sixty pounds. Empty. 
you're not going to be able to move this computer. No, it's going to be full of water. <laughs> but that's okay because you probably have a team of lackeys to carry it around for you because you can afford this computer. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Now that is going to have absolutely no trouble dissipating the 500 plus watts from our CPU and our GPU. And what's really wild is that's on both sides. For the size of this case, it has shockingly little room to maneuver. It's kind of like if you had an SUV on the outside, but then inside is like a VW Beetle. But then if you think about it, so much of the interior of cases these days is places to put radiators, and we don't need that because our radiators are in our side panels, which by the way, incidentally, are almost the same thickness as an entire other computer case. This is a fractal ridge. One like this will run you about $2,200, which, okay, strictly speaking, is not the most expensive case. That award would go to probably the Carl Jacobs desk PC. But compared to the desk PC, this is relatively available for order. They do build them to order. They paint them to your specification and they include actually a lot of what you need. Two 400 mil by 400 millimeter radiators loaded up with Noctua fans. Love to see it. Some 10 mil ID, 16 millimeter OD tubing along with these fittings that I guess, oh, these are quick releases, but they're threaded. Medium. Medium speed releases. You also get a reservoir, just bring your own D5 pump and a little Corsair RGB controller along with one strip, I believe in the front and then some more strips in the box. It's pricey but it's a pretty complete package. And if the results are anywhere near what I'm kind of expecting, it's gonna be very quiet and very cool. You know what else is very cool? Ugreen's RevoDoc Pro 313. If you've got data to move, that's no problem. You can transfer files in seconds with their three 10 gigabit per second USB ports, or you can quickly upload those files to the cloud with the one gig ethernet port. With five USB ports, you can easily expand your laptop into a full-blown triple monitor workstation that won't drain your battery thanks to its 100-watt pass-through with USB power delivery. Check out Ugreen's RevoDoc Pro 313 at the link in the description. Now that I've been compensated, let's keep compensating. And while it's got like a bit of a DIY vibe, like these are 3D printed. Yeah, I see that. The craftsmanship's incredible. There's not a sharp edge anywhere on this case. Oh yeah, that's in there. Oh, she's not going anywhere. Let's take a short break from the cooler though and talk about how we're gonna power it. Surprisingly, the ROG Thor 1600 watt titanium is the first appearance from ASUS ROG. They do charge quite a premium for their ROG parts. I guess just not the biggest premium. <laughs> Ooh. Wow, that's a lot of modular connectors. That's a lot of screen. I mean, it's only one screen, but that for a power supply, that's a lot of screen. Oh, this is something to watch out for. Unlike most cases, there is no grill at the bottom. So if you put your power supply in this way, you are in trouble. But also you wouldn't be able to see your screen. So why would you do that? Do we want to talk cables next? I or? do. Wow. Yeah. Those are cool. Now we wanted to use a cable kit because that's something you can just like buy off the shelf at Newegg. But because of the way this case is, we have really, really long cable runs that need to be accounted for. What? This motherboard has right angle power. Imagine building a motherboard that is A, way wider than normal, and B, has the power plugs coming out the side. Dang it, MSI. It has four type A USB 3s and two type C. What motherboard even has two type C headers? I think this one might. It totally does. Wow, match made in heaven. <laughs> How about I do cable management for a bit? Sure, let me just go ahead and plug these into the power supply with my small hands power and... Whoa, that looks awesome. Yeah, the gold connectors. Not tasteful, but awesome. We got most of the important cables run, all of our custom cables. They're pretty long runs just because of the nature of this case. It doesn't have a big hole up here. It's got no space. Cables are annoying to run. We want it to look nice, you know? We're gonna try and make this 90 degree turn that goes behind the reservoir look a little bit nicer. It looks kind of sloppy. We just don't want to commit to anything yet. And then up here is just honestly the most annoying position for any EPS connector. It's, uh, we're doing our best. We actually ended up buying another kit of the most expensive RGB we could find. Uh, but this is for technically outside of the computer. It's for behind your monitor. 
I think we can still get away with it. I think it's going to make actually a really nice glow. It might be a little inconvenient because we're going to have to run a cable out through the back to get power from the wall, but I think it'll be worth it to have a cool golden glow. Hey, these RGB strips look great. Yeah. Um, <laughs> just, uh, just don't look at how they're like wired in. This doesn't look that bad. Maybe you'll see it later. Basically all that's left is to get this thing in there and then we start water cooling. Oh good, you saved the best part for last. Yeah. And the plan is to mount this at the back? Yep. That is awful. Mm, yeah, especially when you look at where the wires come out on that thing. Oh, Opposite. both sides. Great. <laughs> you can't Great. hide them. Not even 90 degrees, opposite sides. Oh my God, there is no good way to do this. No. I don't like that. And this USB cable, why have it be type C so it can go either way? No, let's have it go this way. <laughs> um, neither of these are threaded, you know that, right? Yeah, we use nuts. There's a, the EK provides nuts. Which ones? Uh, these. Ah! Ah! <laughs> How am I supposed to punch a hole in this? Did you have a plan for this? Uh, no, I just thought we'd just jam screws through. Oh my god. But we could cut, we could jam knife through. You saw it here first, guys, the metal screwdriver. It can do anything. <laughs> it can screw up your case. Interesting update, by the way, on the SSDs. Yeah, these look great. Yeah. Uh, You've got three two and a half inch SSDs per three and a half inch drive bay. Yeah. I love it. Is this a special mount or is that how they intend you to do it? This is exactly how they intend you to do it. That's so cool. It's super cool. But? Oh, but uh, we just found out when we asked for the drives from Team Group, mm -hmm. they said, sorry, we don't have any more 16 terabyte drives. We don't make those anymore. Right. Right? Because so. why would anyone buy a 16 terabyte two and a half inch SATA drive? It's like exactly. a silly, silly it's product. Doesn't really make sense for most people. However, apparently after we got these, suddenly a listing for 16 terabyte drives appears on Newegg. Oh. So this is the only part in here that isn't actually the most expensive. Oh, because these are eight terabytes. These are eight terabyte drives. <sighs> but Newegg must have just found them somewhere. Team Group doesn't make them anymore. So if you want to pay $2,000 for 16 terabytes of storage, now's your chance. This is not the way to do it. You should get a different interface than SATA. That is way too much to spend on a SATA interface drive. Even with only eight terabytes per SSD, this was over $4,000. Okay, it's two pumps. It's the most expensive one. <laughs> <laughs> Did you not realize that one of the pumps goes directly onto here, though? Yeah, we realized. But you just got right, this It was one. the most expensive one. Knowing you would be throwing away one of the two pumps. Hey, maybe we could hook it up later in the loop. We need yet another different size bit to install the pump on the reservoir. So I'm just going to go get a whole pack of them. Adam? Bye. Bye. While he's doing that, I'm going to take apart this pump. Done. <laughs> now, water cooling can get like really, really, really expensive, especially when you go like all custom hardline stuff. So we didn't want to go down that rabbit hole, this being compensator. So we just kind of got like some ZMT tubing from EK, as well as some fittings that look like kind of the ones that are in the case already. I'm a little confused as to what to do next. We could start plumbing it up, but without the GPU, it doesn't really make sense. Should we put it in? Yeah. Here we go. In O3D, brutal by nature. The brutal graphics card. Okay. You could definitely kill a person. I'm not saying you should. I'm just saying like you could. Full back plate, full nickel plated copper front at about $2,000. This isn't Strictly speaking, the most expensive 4090 on the market, but it is the most expensive one that doesn't have an AIO cooler attached to it. And given there's nowhere for us to even mount a radiator in this case. Yeah, did you notice that? No vents. Uh, this is the best we can do. This is not good. As much as I love the functionality of quick disconnects and the high price when I'm trying to build the most expensive system, I do not like the look. <laughs> This is awful. How many hands are you supposed to have to install this side panel? You gotta get the cables and tubing in here. Get, go. Okay, and then you gotta line up the thing. Oh boy. Uh, is this gonna fit? Man, does that even Colin. fit there? No, 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 I got this, I got this, I got this. He doesn't got it. I, no, I got it, I got it. Yeah, hey, I told you guys I got it. Wait. Oh crap, that's the other side panel. <laughs> Has a really cool logo here, now it's on the back. 
Ah, hamburgers. What the heck? No, they're both the same. They're interchangeable. You just have the logo on the front and the back. I could have just left that on. <laughs> Dang it. All right. Sick. Made in Germany, baby. I realize the tube I'm attaching right now is way too long. But the issue is that to get it any shorter, I'm gonna have to be working on it through a teeny tiny little gap in the panel, and then I gotta lift this up and I gotta slide it on. So, I guess we're stuck with it? The more compensator thing to do would be to put one radiator right before each of my heat generating components. Oh yeah. Rather than going straight from the GPU to the CPU. I mean, we have to, right? Yes, 100%. Let's do it. Like if we're gonna cross all our streams anyway, then f it. Not gonna lie, I really did not think this through. Look at this. I gotta get back down here to this radiator with a quick connect. Yeah, I know, right? There we go like that. Then I gotta get this bad boy up to the CPU. Oh, oh. I know, I know. Oh, I should have, I should have done the ugly stuff from the back one, but mm -hmm, it is what it is at this point. Okay, yeah. I moved this. We go out from here into the GPU, out of the GPU into this radiator, straight out of this rad into the CPU. We take that. We go back to the other radiator, rinse and repeat. Hopefully no rinsing. <laughs> no rinsing, just repeating. And all while being able to detach our side panels if we really need to. This is gonna take a minute to fill. The sheer volume of water these radiators are gonna hold. Uh, let me get a filler tool. Our original plan was to just put tap water and I went, no, wait, we can't do that. Gotcha. But I see you couldn't decide what the most expensive water was, so you okay. bought both? Well. Uh, we have the most expensive water, but if you want to pull that out and take a look at it, I was a little Ooh. worried. <laughs> carbonated natural mineral water. Oh, it's carbonated. Yeah, so I was worried you about- You want to put carbonated water in a water cooling loop? <laughs> it's technically the most expensive. All right. If we want to go still, we do have this- uh, Nope. Wait, how much did we pay for this water? That was, a, that was seven bucks a bottle. Seven dollars a bottle? <laughs> yep. Fun fact, I know one of- Okay, carbonation <laughs> and this is not a great combo. <laughs> oh my god. I feel like I'm doing a shoot for the OnlyFans. Uh, we should get it in there. Yeah, this is this is gonna be a disaster. Yeah, it's just a terrible idea. It's actually the worst idea we've ever had. No. Using this water is a bad idea because until it goes completely flat, it's still going to be pressurizing the inside of the loop. So we basically have to have our reservoir open. It's also full of minerals. Oh, it's full of minerals. Oh, good. Yeah, you don't it's generally want in. mineral water for your water cooling loop. Uh, we should plug this into our power. Oh, hey, that's yeah. right. Our sponsor, Ugreen, is gonna be powering the system with a portable battery bank, which is kinda impressive, given that this is a 4090 and a 13900 KS. Yeah, this actually has an overdrive mode that lets it run at 2,500 watts. These things are great, man. For the few times a year that I take it camping, I am so glad that I have it, that if I were to pay $50 per time, I would still be really happy with my purchase. And I've probably already reached the break even point now, owning one for, I think I've had one for about three years now. It's like very handy. I, yeah, yeah I steal one from work frequently. Oh my God. <laughs> no way. I think the pump is airlocked just from like the air of the fizziness. Should we water it That down? is hilarious, absolutely not. Look, there's so much air on the anti-vortex filter thing that I think it's just having a hard time getting water. Okay. Oh, whoa, okay. Buddy. Oh my goodness. Okay, hold on a second, we got anything in the, oh yeah, it's, a, it's in the GPU block already. I mean, that could. That is that noise. That's the pump running dry. See, in places where they don't have good tap water, I get it, but our tap water is so good in BC that I just do not understand people paying $7 for frickin' water. I mean, at least this is sparkling on like the $6 bottles of water that we have over there that are just still. Okay, that was a pretty clean pour. So we are gonna get some serious carbonation action here. You guys ready? Yeah. Woo hoo 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 hoo! There's no water. Oh, shoot! I got, I got the water, I got the water. 
This is very hard water. Absolutely. I'm noticing just from the little bits that have dried on the side of the res, um, this is awful, awful for water cooling. Awful. Now that the system's almost ready to fire up, it's time to show our monitor. Now you might think, well, that's not that big. Linus is just a tiny human. But here, Adam, you stand next to it. Oh yeah, it's that big. The main selling point here is it's big. Uh, 55 inches, 4K, 165 hertz refresh rate, 600 nits peak brightness, almost the most curvature out of any monitor on the market. And all this can be yours for just 3,000 US dollars. You know, the worst part is it's not even Samsung's best monitor. No, you can get the Odyssey G9 OLED. It's way better. It's just the most expensive one. Wait, no, there's still parts we haven't insta installed. I forgot about the most expensive kit of three fans, which we ended up not being able to use because haha, there are no fan mounts in the case. And also the most expensive capture card. That isn't professional grade. Yeah, you can get very expensive capture cards, but this is for gamers. Yeah, game streaming. A live gamer. Li yeah, live gamers. No dead gamers allowed. No dead. <laughs> and we're about to power it up all off this portable power station from Ugreen that has been sitting here fast charging this whole time and is now at 100%. We also have this 12 in one dock from Ugreen and oh, there's like a GAN nitride charger in it. Oh, cool. So that's just the power supply for that. It's not just like, it's just a regular power supply that you could also just use for any USB C. Oh, it even supports PD. Okay. That's awesome. That's super cool, 100 watts. And we need that because we also got the most expensive laptop for our setup. <laughs> yep. Okay, not technically the most expensive laptop, but it's... It's the most compensatory Mac, uh, <laughs> MacBook you can get. This is not the most expensive keyboard. Once you get into custom keyboards, there is pretty much no limit to what they can cost. You could buy a key cap that costs as much as this entire keyboard. But what this is, is a very expensive keyboard. It's the Mountain Everest. Oh, wow, so. Oh, that's a good packaging. It's full of modules then. Has a media dock, a dial, like a numpad that can go on either side. It's, it's pretty sick. Oh. Whoa, I, oh, all right. Uh, why did we never see a bio screen or anything? Because it's a TV. Five minutes until we're just unceremoniously dumped on the desktop. Yeah, okay. Well, before we get anywhere, we're gonna need to use our mouse. Oh yeah, right. What do we have for mouse? What we have is the Razer Viper Mini Signature Edition. Wow. It's magnesium. It's like almost entirely hollow. Oh. It weighs just 49 grams, 30,000 DPI and 8,000 Hertz polling rate. If you plug this in and max the polling rate, you will legit see your CPU usage go up by like 5%. Honestly, it feels somehow light yet premium. How'd they do that? Magnesium, baby. Wow. Magnesium alloy, just to be clear. You're not gonna like have your hand light on fire when the second you start sweating. <laughs> we got the Odyssey and the Odysseys. The LCD X gaming headset. Odyssey's nuts. Oh. <laughs> oh, micro B, really? On a product that costs, however much, how much is this thing? Uh, it's like $900. But it is out of date, and they basically replaced it with a better model called the Odyssey Maxwell that's like literally half the price. But it's literally half the price, so we had to buy this one. Yep. It's definitely working. Our CPU is idling at 20 to 22 degrees. 13 freaking degrees. There we are, we're below the dew point. Yeah, well, well remember, for the CPU to be below the dew point, the block is way below the dew point. That classy water is really working hard. <laughs> okay, here we go. Wow, that's really big. At least it scales properly. I hate, BIOSes don't support ultra wide yet. I have a G9 at home and so everything's just like. Well, X and is enabled. Yeah. 6,800 mega transfers per second. Are we gonna get that? No. No. Wait, this thing has 200 gigs of RAM? Yeah, yeah, why did we ever think that was a good idea anyway? <laughs> Screw it. We can't even get it running at 5,600. So we're gonna rip two of the sticks out and then we're just gonna do the most compensator thing ever and put the sticks we're not using on display. Hey, 1600 megahertz. 
Disappointingly, you are rarely, if ever, going to see that six gigahertz turbo behavior in the real world. As you can see with even a single core load on it, we're turboing at 5.6 because, you know, there's still stuff running in the background. But, uh, you know, hey, if you really want to play around with it, you can use XTU to, uh, you know, change your turbo ratios. I've seen these KS chips do six gigahertz across all performance cores in the past, and you might get lucky. With this cooler, we probably won't. We're at 40 degrees right now, but that's only because we're running a single core load. The second we hit this thing with a multi-core load, you are going to see trouble. With that said, this is 360 watts of 370, and we're at 101 degrees. Oh boy, oh. Coolant temperature must be great. I mean, yeah, the coolant is, ow! <laughs> Why did I try to touch the radiator through the fan? While we wait for it to reboot, why don't we answer the question you guys have all been waiting for? How much does the finished system weigh? Okay. I'm 167.2 today with computer. Oh, wow, that's really heavy. That is 260, 263. Oh my God. It weighs almost 100 pounds. Wow. 500 watts from this thing and all I'm doing is downloading a game. In fairness, a lot of that is probably the monitor. <laughs> we got the setup, huh, 150 watts doing absolutely nothing. Do we have the monitor on this too? No, that's just the cooler. That's over 700 watts. That's just the CPU. What the actual is going on right now? The, the GPU is not doing anything, sir. No, I, let's, let's try it. I'm trying to scroll down to the GPU and it's just this wall of SSDs. <laughs> I'm still going. There it is. Okay, there we go. All right, ooh, those GPU temps. Okay, so we need Fermark ready to go as well, right? Yeah. Sorry, well, how many watts are we at? We're at 700 We're watts. We're at 700 watts. Okay, you're kicking in the CPU now? <gasps> oh, okay, so the thing is, it can do 2,500 watts in boost mode or whatever, but that's for a limited amount of time and the voltage can drop, which is not good for sensitive electronics. So we are riding, we are riding the limits of what this thing can do. How's the heat? How you doing, buddy? Bad. How long do we get to run? 36 minutes, actually. Yeah, I know, that's a lot. 1200 watts for 36 minutes. How that's many crazy. pizza pockets could you microwave? Quite a few, it turns out. <laughs> 37. <laughs> wow. That's like 38 pizza that's pockets. That's enough to feed like your whole family and then a couple of campsites around you. That Excellent. For extended gaming testing, though, obviously that's not going to be enough time. Why don't we plug it into the wall and see if it can run Crisis? <laughs> crisis? Yeah, no, something. <laughs> new crisis, new crisis. We got Starfield, right? Hey, there we yeah, go. Yeah, we got Starfield. We Let's got, go. We got Cyberpunk. Cyberpunk. With the... So what, what, what did you change such that we are actually exceeding 1200 watts now? We're at 1300 watts for the tower alone. I tossed on a quick little uh, dirty overclock on, on everything. Oh, good. And now we're at 1300, but now we're throttling down because CPU got too dang hot. Oh, I am holding up. Oh. oh, error. We overloaded it. 100 pound monitor plus 100 pound computer. How is this still running at like 60 FPS average? The 1% lows are still above 40. This looks absolutely flipping stupid good. Whee! New question though, what's our power consumption and our temps like in games? The intended use case for the cryo cooler. Wow. CPUs at 30 to 40 degrees, depending on how you want to measure it. And power consumption's at just shy of 900 watts. If all you ever do is game, cryo cool. Yeah. If you do anything else. Halt to draw your weapon. Uh, well, that weren't it. <laughs> <laughs> and crashed. Oh. What the? What is happening <laughs> yeah, right now? Yeah, pulled over real good there. Now the cops after you. So. What is happening?
This is definitely the fastest, most overkill, ludicrous gaming experience I think I've had today. <laughs> today. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you guys enjoyed this video, woo! Maybe go check out any of our past compensator videos. They're kind of awesome. No, my car's not working. Um, oh, how'd I end up there? I got uh, out of the car and I ended up, video, video, I ended up video, behind the car. Video. No, hold on. Foc the no. camera over there, focus. I need, I need this car. I, li no, I like no, these Linus, cars. I like this Linus model of car. I need another day. one. Linus video. Thanks for watching. <laughs>